like it's like a, like an object bag. It's a fancy word. I'll look it up. Can't remember it. But you'll be able to see people do it. So you're like, hey, I need an object. I don't want to keep generating them all because creating and destroying things takes time. On your game engine, you want to just have everything instantiated and say, here's my 50 things. If you need something, go pull it out of the bag and render it. When it gets destroyed, throw it back in the bag and just don't render it. And then you have a set of objects that aren't continually instantiated and destroyed by the game engine itself. Okay, let's delve into this movement. Let's really get to know it for a while. And we're going to talk about steering behaviors. There are some standard ways that people have come up with how do I make autonomous characters move using physics and make it look like they're moving realistically? So these steering behaviors were, were developed by Craig Reynolds, have been refined and refined. There's libraries that people have written. Here's one in C++. There's one for Unity called Open Steering, or I think it's Unity Steer. That just helps it. Yeah, I know it's a steer. Yes. <laughs> yeah, if you were a computer scientist, what are you gonna do? You gotta make funny puns. So. Well, when you have to make puns, they don't necessarily have to be funny. Yes. <laughs> so here's ones called steer or seek and flee. This is our target spot, and we want our autonomous character to seek to that point. What you're seeing on the screen are its current velocity of where it's going, and then a steering velocity that says, where should I go? Where do I want to go, and how do I move myself around? The easiest way I saw to understand this was through this tutorial. Here's some great pictures. You are the red box. You want to go towards the target. Your current velocity is the green. Where you want to go is your desired velocity, the gray. And so you have to calculate a steering vector, the blue one. That would get you from your current velocity to your desired velocity, and it puts those together. Does that make sense? OK, so the way we do that is with a couple of lines of code. Calculate your desired velocity. Figure out your target position in the screen where you are in the screen, normalize that into a vector, multiply it times your speed. And then your steering is your desired velocity minus where you're currently going. That's your steering. So desired velocity minus current velocity, putting those vectors together gives you a vector down like this that will steer you in the direction of where you want to go that will steer it around in a nice path looking like it's actually driving a car and moving it around. You can't just instantly go to where you want to go. You have to use your velocities and move things around. So let's see if we can get something like that to work. Okay. Let's make a new Unity project. Steering. Oh yes, save my scene. Thank you. <coughs> Give myself a floor. Oh, zero, two. Here's my floor. Let's give myself a light so I can see things. And, and I was in play mode, yeah, so I'll give myself a light so I can see things. Why is my floor so dark? Oh, my scale. Zero, oh, that's not good. Perfect. Oh, I was in, <laughs> oh goodness, I hate that. Yes, there we go, there's my floor. And let's actually move the camera up into the air. Action. Let's 
spot zero, but rotate 90. <laughs> Up into the air. Fool me once. <laughs> no, yes. 90. There we go. Now I can see things on that floor. It's going to be hard to see what's going on. Stone floor. Let's bring you in. Rah. Come on. Just to give myself a floor. Oh, look, you made a material. <clears throat> Let's give it some tiling here. I gotta do it again. Yeah. Oh, I have. I hate that blue square. Okay. Plain, stone floor. Much better. Hey. Okay. Cool. So now, let's add an object in there. Oh, thank you. Someday. I wish. I had. Someday. I will get that to stop. Okay, so let's give ourselves a sphere. Position spot one. There you are. Stop it. Good. And let's start writing a script here. C sharp. A seek script. Okay, so this object, our sphere, is now going to be seeking. Where do I want it to seek? this position. Go to this target position and in start nothing needs to happen but in update we need to do those steps of where is the target, where am I, what is my current velocity, where's my vector, how does that fit together. So let's put that together. Minus my position. I have a vector three. My transform dot position is a vector three. This tells me where I'm going. I need to normalize that when I use it. So I'm going to say, hey, rigid body, add a force, desired, normalized. minus rigid body dot velocity. We don't have to write all the code to normalize things. Hooray! Again, another benefit of using somebody else's physics engine. They've spent time knowing that people need to normalize vectors all the time. Here we go. <clears throat> It's not happy because we have no target and it has no rigid body. Good. Let's not do it while it's blue. Component, physics, rigid body, and sphere. You also have this target here, zero, zero, zero. Well, that's where you're starting. Let's make you go to four, seven. Hey, 
It worked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. We need a bit more force. So what we can do is with our we could lower the mass. I want to add a speed so that I could say which one gets the speed. Yeah, it's right here. Times the speed. So I could say sphere. Here's your script. Your speed is going to be four. A little bit faster. Go up there and go to your position. Now it wiggles back and forth because it has this momentum that it's trying to go and it's always trying to go that speed to get there. And because, well here's one of the benefits of the blue, just a second, right, we can dynamically change the target. Oh, I can't shrink it anymore. Brr. I can dynamically change the target. And, oh, and it starts to go somewhere else. And then I can change it. Like negative three. Head on down there. It can go to that position following physics by adding forces. I can make it go up in the air. Let's have it go to, say, 10. It's being pulled down at that point of danger. Never mind. We need a speed of at least 10, is what I'm saying. Okay. Yay for physics. And it flies up in the air. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Very nice. Very nice. What's happening in our chat window? Anything? No. No chatters anymore. Oh, wait, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That was awesome. Perfect. Yay. Okay. Any questions about these forces now? This was the seek. Now, if I want to make it flee, put that back to zero, what would I have to do? Instead of going towards that spot, what do I have to change? I've got to flip a vector somewhere. Yes. Current velocity, desired velocity is going away. It has to be inverted. And the way to do that is instead of subtracting the target from the position, you subtract the position from the target. And you should be all set. So, swap those around. Transform position minus target. And now it will run away as fast as it can from that spot. Yeah, and it just flies off the screen. It's falling. It's gone. So we've implemented seek and flee. One small little change for these steering behaviors. Arrival is what you might have thought we were trying to do with seek, but arrival says you don't want to wander yourself back and forth across that spot. You want to say, hey, I know where I'm going. I'm actually getting closer. Let's modulate my speed based on what's going on there. Very similar. Pursue and evade. Your target moves. Your target starts to have a different position.